Do you want your bird photos to look like this? Well, today I'm going to be giving you guys the secret for how professional photographers consistently get good photos of birds every single time. How you guys doing? My name is Johnny Langton. I'm a photographer from Long Island, New York, and I've been doing photography for about six years now. I recently got very interested in wildlife photography, especially bird photos in particular, because there are so many different species around my area where I live. I didn't realize until I started how difficult it really is. I would go out for two, three hours and only come home with about 50 to 60 pictures of birds because they were so hard to come by. They always flew off right when you got close to them. Well, today I'm going to be showing you guys what the pros do to get professional photos every single time they go out of birds. I'm also going to be letting you guys in on a little secret that I like to do, which allows me to get photos every single time I go out. I never realized until I watched plenty of different YouTube videos on wildlife photography and uh, bird photography that the pros are usually setting up their photos. I never realized this. Uh, once I was told it, it kind of makes sense because a lot of these small birds that you want to photograph, the colorful ones, the nice ones, they're very skittish. And the second you get close to them or if they hear you coming or see you, they'll fly away right away. So to get pictures of them eating or to get pictures of them uh, up close and in focus, you know, to get all your settings right, is a very difficult thing. And that's why a lot of the pros, they'll set up a photo. So basically, they'll have a perch, they'll have a nice branch that they like, they'll set up the background so that it's far away from the subject and it'll be perfectly out of focus and, you know, won't be distracting at all. And then they'll set up some food or a bird bath or something like that to get the perfect photo. Now this photo that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video was actually not set up. This is one that I went out and got. Uh, there was a lot of luck involved and there was also a little bit of cheating. So if you stick around to the end, I'll show you guys what I did to make that photo look a lot more professional. Now, if you guys would like to set up a photo, there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you have enough room in your backyard, feel free to do so. Or if there's a place where you know nobody else is really going to be around and bother you, you can do it at a park or something like that as well. But personally, me, I don't like to do this because my backyard is very small. I don't have enough room to set up a perch for a bird to go to and then have a good background as well. It would just not work out based off the size of my yard. But depending on where you live, that might be something that you want to do. But you need to Keep in mind, if you ever want to enter your photos into contests, this is considered cheating. You need to, for you know, wildlife photographer of the year, bird photographer of the year, you cannot use planned photos. They can't be set up where you were feeding the bird or cheating like that. It needs to be birds in their natural habitat doing what they would normally be doing without you getting involved in that process at all. But if you're just posting these pictures onto Instagram, yeah, feel free to set up the photos all you want. Feel free to edit them as much as you want and get the perfect professional looking photo. Now this is where I'm going to let you guys know my number one tip that I like to do since I am fairly new to bird photography. And this allows me to go out every single time and get good photos of birds. And that is to photograph the bigger birds. Now there's a lot of big birds near me. Um, I actually have some you know, rare ones like the bald eagle, which is in my neighborhood. So I'm very lucky to have that. And he will not come very close to you, but you can get some really good photos of it flying through the sky like this one here. And then also we have plenty of common birds such as ducks and we have Canadian geese in my town that will uh, you know, be in the ponds near me. So I like to take photographs of those because a lot of people actually feed them. So they'll come up right, you know, right up to you really close. They're not very afraid of you. So you can get really good pictures of them. And I know what a lot of people are thinking is, you know, we see these Canadian geese on a daily basis. So how interesting could the photo really be? And this was something that I was battling for a long time. I always thought, you know, how can I get a good photo of a Canadian geese? Like, you know, there's, they're a dime a dozen. Everybody's taking photos of those. It turns out you just need to be smart with it. You just need to be taking pictures for, uh, you know, a long time. When I go out and shoot pictures of birds, I usually come back with about a thousand photos, which sounds crazy, but it's not. You want to be getting them doing different things. You want to be, uh, you know, I got this photo of a Canadian geese here where he was flying in. I didn't even know he was coming. I didn't even think I had my camera settings right. I just put it into uh, autofocus for, um, you know, 
it wasn't eye detection or anything like that. It was just like subject detection. And somehow I was lucky and did get the eyes in focus, but it was coming in and I just started taking pictures like crazy. He splashed into the water and I think that this photo actually came out really good. I'm really happy with it. So that's one of my number one tips is to take pictures of the big birds because they will let you take pictures of them without being skittish and running away. Now, if it is small birds that you want to take pictures of, I understand a lot of people want to do this. There's, uh, you know, a lot of these birds are very colorful and, uh, you know, they're, you know, people want to really get pictures of them. I understand it. I want to do the same thing as well, but it's not as easy. So what you need to do is you need to be very quiet wherever you're going. And uh, when you hear the bird calls, you know, try to get a little bit closer to it, but don't get too close because you're, you're going to scare it off. So um, when you hear them, just freeze. Don't move at all. Try to spot where they are first before you take your next steps because it's pointless to get closer if you don't even know where it is. Also, once you get close to it, try to compose the best background possible. But before you even do that, just start taking pictures anyway because it might fly away before you get the perfect background or the perfect lighting. So just take as many pictures as possible. Another pro tip that I like to use is my camera is a mirrorless camera, the Canon EOS R. So I like to shoot in silent shutter mode. Uh, it's just a little bit better where you don't want to scare off the birds. Sometimes a loud shutter from some of these uh, you know old cameras is, you know, it'll startle the bird and make it fly away. So you want to be as quiet as possible. Now, another tip of mine is to just be patient. You don't need to go out wearing you know, crazy camouflage or, uh, you know, putting on a ghillie suit to get these photos of the birds. You just need to be patient sometimes. Sometimes they'll come right to you. There's certain birds that um, are not too skittish and they are, you know, small birds that are nice to photograph. I've had a lot of luck with things like that as well, but it just takes a lot of patience. You can't expect that in the first five minutes of going out, you're going to spot a beautiful, you know, colorful bird and get a perfect picture of it on your first try. It's not that easy. So you need to have patience in order to get good bird photos. Now, lastly, I said I was gonna give you guys a tip on how I was able to get this photo that I showed you at the beginning of the video, and it's actually that I cheated quite a bit in getting that photo. Now, I did see this bird actually in the wild. I didn't plant it, I didn't feed it, I didn't do anything like that to set up the photo, but when I did get it, this is what it actually looked like before editing. And I know what you're thinking, that's a complete difference and that's, you know, you're really cheating and getting that photo. But if I'm just posting this on Instagram and I'm not entering it into any contests, then do what you need to do. I used Photoshop's generative fill. I removed all these branches and leaves that were distracting from the image. And technically, yes, the, you know, some of the body of the bird is not real. It's not actually what it was when I saw it. But, you know, if I'm just posting this on social media, you know, to get likes or for people to see, you know, I will, you know, edit sometimes like that. It's, it's, it is cheating. I understand that, but I'm not going to be entering this photo into any contests. So it doesn't really matter. So I just wanted to make this quick video to let you guys know some of my favorite tips and tricks for how I like to take photos of birds. It is a very difficult thing to do. You know, a lot of people think that they could just go out and get the best pictures in five minutes. You know, they'll have come back and edit a photo that's perfect. It's not like that. You either need to set up your photos or you need to be very patient and very knowledgeable. You need to study these birds and know how, what their, you know, mannerisms are, what are they going to be doing, uh, what do they do after they eat, what do they do, you know, all these different things that you need to keep in mind to get good bird photos. So it's not an easy thing. It's going to take you guys a long time to become skilled at that and to figure all these things out. But I'm glad you guys, uh, you know, got this far in the video. I hope it helped you out in a way. And if it did, make sure to like this video so that more people can see it. And make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be posting a lot more bird videos like this in the future.